thank you, Mr. Duren, uh, for joining me today on the program. Thank you. First of all, could you share with our viewers some data on the private sector in Mongolia, especially small and medium-sized enterprises? How many business entities are operating here in Mongolia and how many of them are classified as SMEs? In Mongolian economy, private sector provides one million workforce, uh, one million employment to the economy. And uh, according to the study conducted by the Bank of Mongolia, there are 80,000 business entities registered with the state, state registration center and uh, 68,000 of them are classified as SMEs. It accounts 86% of total legal entities of Mongolia. Hmm. SMEs employ around 650,000 people, which is 57% of total workforce in Mongolia. So you can see it's very important part, integral part of the Mongolian economy. Mm -hmm. uh, due to uh, the lockdown and current situation where uh, companies are not able to run their operations, many businesses are struggling with a variety of challenges. MNCCI conducted a survey of Mongolian business entities and presented its results. Could you elaborate on the result of the survey? As I mentioned before, SMEs are regarded as the backbone of the Mongolian economy. And uh, although in Mongolia, SMEs are only responsible of 18% uh, of total GDP, but the employment it provides uh, to the nation is huge. So the SMEs are highly impacted with the lockdown oh. in, in, under the current situation. Okay. Uh, MSCCI conducted uh, a survey which uh, is, it's a fifth survey we conducted during the pandemic, since of the rise of the pandemic this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the latest uh, survey included uh, 3,500 enterprises in total. Based on the figures provided by the, by the survey, uh, we found out that around uh, 150,000 jobs were terminated since the beginning of the lockdown on November 12th. Uh -huh. And if, it, if it's continued uh, for more than one month, some 500,000 jobs can be terminated there is a risk of job termination. Uh, uh, there is a risk of uh, loss of employ uh, huge number of employment in, uh -huh. uh, under the current situation. Major challenges uh, faced by the SMEs are the salary payments, rent payments, uh, difficulties with the loan repayments, um, Sixty-three percent of the total respondents um, replied that they cannot survive. Uh, they cannot will not be able to pay salaries um, for more than one month. Mm -hmm. So, which means some five uh, five hundred thousand people will be uh, left without salary if the lockdown is continued beyond uh, thirty days. MNCCI uh, submitted uh, policy recommendations on November the 17th to the government. It includes four sets of policy actions to support businesses, right? Can you tell me a bit about it? So, the MNCCI uh, made the recommendation to the government to take economic measures to reduce the risk, economic risk of the pandemic situation and which included a uh, number of proposals. The government uh, saw the recommendations of managing the risks, economic and risks during the 
pandemic uh, lockdown. Uh, the recommendations of, for managing economic and business risks during the uh, public readiness situation include four sets of policy actions with uh, 30 suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, concentrates mostly on four major areas, which is to support and ensure normal operation of the food sector in the first place and to provide uh, as many citizens as possible with the cash income and uh, also some actions to neutralize impact of the quarantine lockdown uh, on businesses and to gradually restore the business operations maybe in four or five uh, different levels. Uh -huh. On November the 18th, the Prime Minister announced uh, uh, 23 measures to support individuals, families and businesses uh, during the pandemic. How satisfied are you with these measures? How effective do you think uh, are these measures? Um, based on our survey, we delivered uh, economic measure proposal to the government, uh, which included 30 different items. And uh, as government announced uh, the 23 measures, um, the government uh, commented that 14 suggestions delivered by MSCCI were included in the measures. Mm -hmm. But um, later on, when we, con uh, we conclude that uh, Three, only three suggestions are fully included in the government measures and uh, 11 of them only uh, partially covers the measures suggested by the MSCCI. Uh -huh. And uh, later on, on November 27th, Parliament is uh, discussing, uh, discussed uh, amendments to the laws on the exemption of import duties and VAT for some imported food products, including rice, vegetable, oil, wheat, oil, uh, plants, uh, vegetable plants, uh, etc. So this is also one of the proposals uh, which were suggested by MSCCI also. Uh -huh. The government decided to extend the period of lockdown uh, in the capital city and uh, also the other two provinces until uh, the uh, December the 11th uh, to contain the pandemic. However, some businesses and services are allowed uh, to run their operations. What types of businesses and services uh, are allowed? How clear and reasonable uh, is the decision to businesses? What do you think? One of the main complaints coming from the business entities are the irregularities in the decisions and the sudden changes in the uh, decision at this different levels of the uh, decision makers. Like uh, city, when city is proposing one decision, the next day it's uh, overwritten by the uh, state uh, emergency commission, etc. So uh, before the extension, uh, before the decision made to extend the lockdown, we met with the government. Uh, we proposed that uh, businesses must be opened on a gradual basis. Uh, first of all, the export uh, processing factories must be opened at the first place so that ensure the flow of the uh, foreign currencies, uh, foreign uh, ensure the flow of the foreign trade, uh -huh. uh, which will allow the government and Mongolia, uh, Bank of Mongolia, to make critical decision on uh, providing some cash support to the uh, general public. In the government decision to open eighteen. Uh, types of business sectors is met with the positive response from private sector, which include, of 
because uh, uh, production of uh, medical organizations, medicines, manufacture of cosmetics, production and trade, uh, transportation of hay and fodder, uh, leather and wood, Kashmir processing plants, packaging and printing in the factories which support those fac uh, export processing factories, woodworking and construction materials industry, um, e-commerce and deliveries. This gradual opening of businesses is uh, reviving some 50,000 uh, more employment. MSCCI insists on taking further actions to reduce the risks, economic risks created by the pandemic situation and uh, especially financial support to low-income families, which are uh, uh, citizens that are private entrepreneurs that are operating on daily income uh, jobs. Uh -huh. And um, the business entities are expecting uh, support, financial support in the loan repayments and uh, of course financial report, uh, support in the rent payments is the uh, one of the critical issues facing uh, faced by SMEs uh -huh. and of course the gradual opening of the businesses and uh, uh, one of the major things uh, the entities are waiting for government to make decision is to clearness about when they will be able to uh, start their operations so that they make uh, proper preparation uh, to their financial uh, situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Dure. CEO of Mongolian National Chamber of Commerce, uh, thank you uh, very much for being here, uh, for making time to talk with me. Take care. Thank you.